Good morning and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. Joining you after a couple of weeks, I took a week off to get a little bit of rest. And even though I am wearing my I Knit Periodically t-shirt, that was a birthday present, <laughs> um, this week I thought we would take a break and talk about a little bit of crochet. I have not done crochet in a while. If you all have ideas of crochet techniques you would like to see, I've done quite a few videos on a lot of crochet techniques, please let me know. This is one I I've wanted to do for a little bit. This is called the popcorn hat and I will try to put the link in the comments. And it makes voracious use of the popcorn stitch. See that really textured stitch right there, which is a really fun one. It's different than the puff stitch. It has a little bit more granular texture to it. And it's a little bit bigger actually than the puff stitch. And I think in many ways it's easier than the puff stitch. There are fewer loops you have to contend with. However, you do need to take the leap of faith of taking your hook out of the working loop and putting it back in again. And once you get the hang of that, all bets are off. You can add these fun things to everything. It's, it's so fun. So let's get to it. So again, we're going to look at the popcorn stitch and here's my attempt to draw out some little popcorns because what is neat about the popcorn stitch is it's almost trying to replicate the biggest part when the popcorn pops, it's got a little bit of texture. It's pretty round. It kind of sticks out in a fun way. And that is what you get with a popcorn stitch as opposed to say a puff stitch, which tends to be very smooth and eh, a little bit shorter, depending on how you make it. So some of that depends on how many stitches or how many things you're putting into it. So we're going to look at the one that I did in my popcorn hat, which again, I think you should make. It's really fun. So I'm talking about, I'm referring to it, the popcorn stitch as a bubble with more height and texture than a puff stitch. Okay. So here's the basic setup of how you do it. We'll look at the words, we'll look at the pictures, then we'll do it ourselves. So DC, this is, remember you're learning the lingo for a pattern. DC is double crochet. Usually there's pretty simple abbreviations, but there's still the hurdle of learning them before everything makes sense. So you're going to do four double crochets, double crochet four, sometimes it's written DC four or four DC, in the same space. One hole, you're going to go into it four times to make four double crochets. So it'll be like a little mini shell almost. And then here's the scary part, but it's not so scary once you practice it some. You're going to take your hook, remove your hook from the working loop, take it right out. Then the instructions usually will tell you to insert your hook from front to back through the top of the first double crochet. So if you have four, you're over here, you're going to go back to the beginning of the four that were there. We'll look at the pictures in a second. So you're inserting your hook. You're catching that loop you just took your hook out of and you're pulling it th back through the first stitch. Let me add that here. So we'll, we'll look at all of that as we go, but what it does is it takes your fan and it crumples it in on itself to make a bubble. It's pretty cool. And oh, you gotta love it when catch my spelling errors as we're filming. Here's a tip that I would throw at you if you're going to do this on your own without following a pattern. Put at least one chain on either side of the top of this because you're going to have this bubble and you might want to put a little space between the next bubble or the next stitch that's anchoring things in place to account for this robust texture you're creating. So let's take a look at my pictures of this. I've broken it down into four steps. Let's take a look at my pictures right now. So step one, we already have our four double crochets right there. One, two, three, four. Let's color code them so that we can see what's going on. So here we go. I'm going to make the first one pink. And notice they are all going into the same space. That's the hole right there, all going in there. I'm going to make the second one 
orange. I'm going to have a little rainbow for some here. Yay! There's our orange one. We're going to make our next one green. I'm going to make our last one dark blue. And then I'm hoping this will stand out enough. I'm going to make our working yarn, yeah, a light blue teal. Okay. Kind of the same color, but I want us to be able to see where things are going. So the first, what we're going to do here, you're going to take, I'm going to put an arrow here. So I wrote here, remove the hook from the working loop. The working loop is usually what we, we keep pulling thing, everything through the loop and there's one loop remaining on the hook in most crochet techniques. Or you know you're done when you're back to only one loop there. But in the popcorn stitch, once you make your four double crochets, so you make your four into the same hole then you're going to take your hook out. If you're worried about it, make that loop a little bit bigger. That's another tip. If you're worried about it, pull that loop a little bit bigger before you take the hook out so you're, so you're feeling more secure about not losing your work. How about that? Here's step two. I've taken it out. See that loop? Our teal loop is just hanging out here. Step two is to insert your hook from front to back through the first double crochet you made. It's the pink one. I'm going to color code everything now and revisit. And if you notice, I colored those backwards. I started with four, three, two, one. Because that is what I will often do if I'm not sure if there are double crochets on either side of this stitch, other things happening. I will start with where the loop is and I will backtrack. Four, three, two, one. Also, notice I changed the picture a little bit. If we tilted down the top of these double crochets, you would see there's little V's running along the top. And just like working a regular double crochet, you want to stick your hook under that whole top V. It's that spot right there. There's actually like a little hole and gap right under that top V. So you stick it under. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take it over through this loop. We're going to catch that loop again. That is step three. Let's try to keep both of these in the picture. So I've stuck it through the first double crochet. I'm going to catch that loop. This is what it will look like once you've done that. So you're going to catch the working loop in the hook. Let's color code all this so again we see what's happening. Your hook is through this first stitch, which is pink, and these things might start to get a little distorted now because it's already starting to do its motion of pulling. But we've got the teal working loop. 
attached to the working yarn is back in the hook. And the next thing we're going to do is pull that loop through the hole that we went into on that first stitch. Pull it back through. What you will end up with is number four. This is what it will look like once you pull it back through. So here's our little popcorn bubble that we've made. And all the pieces are still there. The only thing we might not see right now on this front part is that first stitch got yanked around the back. So we've got our working yarn safe and secure. It's been pulled through the pink stitch. We've still got our orange stitch there. And the green stitch. And the blue stitch is back there. He just might not be so visible from the front. But it's pulled the top together. The bottom is pulled together because all of those stitches went into the same hole. So you have a rough and fun bump that we call the popcorn stitch. Let's see what it looks like with real yarn. So here's my crochet sample. I've got a bunch of single crochets, a couple rows of them. I decide to start with a double crochet here. Remember I said make room for the texture you're about to make. Try t try a chaining one. And let's try going into this hole here. First thing to do is to do four double crochets. Remember double crochet is yarn over into the hole, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two until you're done twice. One loop on it means you're done. So let's get three more in there. Here's number two. Number three, number four. So remember, I'm still going into that same hole. What we end up with, other than my yarn getting tangled over here, you end up with a mini fan. I might do five of these if I wanted to fan all the way across, but I got four. And here's the top. Remember I said the top would look like little Vs. Here's the area right under here. We've got our post and the nice little hole. I often call these on double crochets when what you've just made is facing you. I call them P's because the hole is off to the side like you would draw a letter P. And so one, two, three, four, or think here's my first one. I made four so I can count backwards. Four, three, two, one. So I need to take my hook Pull the loop big if you're worried about it. Take it out. Find that P hole. I know that sounds funny. Put your hook through front to back. Get it through that working loop again. Tighten it up. Maybe get your tension back at this point. And pull it through. Popcorn. I'm going to chain one. Give it some space. And you could do it right here again. It might be kind of tight. I think I'm going to skip one. I'm going to make a new hole here. Find a new hole I'm going to go into. I'm going to do it this again. So we're going to go one. Two. Same hole. Here's my hole. Let me do my third one. I need yarn. I need a fourth one. You remember, pull it big if you're worried about it. Count backwards. Four, three, two, one, or forwards. You need to get four away. Insert into that P hole. Front to back. Catch that loop back in your hook and pull it through. Look, I got two of them. Look how big they are with this yarn. <laughs> All right, let me do one more just for security here. So again, I'm going to skip a hole. 
I'm going to go to this one. I got to get four in there. Might have to get some more slack in my yarn in a minute. I got one, two. If you can't find where you're supposed to go, follow the post down to the hole. Three. Always before that fourth, I need a little more yarn. Follow the post down to make sure. Sometimes people will go over into the different holes. Try to make sure you're going into the same spot four times. All right, I'm gonna pull it a little big. One, two, three, four. Remember, it doesn't matter if you count backwards or forwards, get four away. Get back to the first one. If you're gonna make them with more texture and pick a different number, you gotta count. Here's the little P, top of my double crochet. Stick it through from front to back. Get in this hook again, cinch it up, pull it through. Look at that fun texture. I hope that was helpful. As you can see, this hat did really fun things with it where it made pyramids. We've got certain numbers and then we've got fewer. So like if we start from the top down on this one, I had one here, two, three, four, five. Alternating it with double crochets, it just makes really fun texture. Look how huge these popcorns are. Really fun. So, I hope that helped. If you have more questions, let me know. If there are other techniques you would like to see, like I said, I've done a bunch of, uh, of crochet videos and knitting videos. I'm always looking for new things to try and to show you, and I will add things to the list Sometimes I get around to everything people want, and sometimes I need more nudges, you know. If it's something I haven't done yet, I'll learn how to do it, and I'll share it with you. And just like with continental knitting, sometimes that means because I am not as, as, as proficient in that as regular knitting, I can sometimes share with you, here's the foibles I came across when I tried to learn. Here's some things to look out for. So, let me know what you think. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. You can ring that bell for alerts. I try to film on Mondays from my, my lovely home here. It's chilly Brevard, North Carolina. I don't think I ever said in the beginning that I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. Anyway, most of you who watch these videos already know that. So reintroduction. <laughs> but, you know, consider it. We do Zoom lessons and we do in-person lessons. Right now they're $15. There's limited space for the in-person with masks and all that kind of stuff. Zoom can work really well for some people. The only holdup I have is I can't reach through the camera and help you fix. I really have to talk you through your fix. But then you learn even more when you figure it out for yourself with a little coaching. Anyway, I hope you all are doing well and staying safe this Thanksgiving week. And may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. Hi, Kitty. Was, oh yes. My COVID cardigan's way too comfy for you to come join me in the filming room today, huh? Yeah. You are your own master, I know. Yes. <laughs>